everybody and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another brand new video. It's time for another ACC track guide and this time we are back home again in Indiana. I was genuinely surprised at just how enjoyable this track was to learn. The corners are tricky but flow really nicely once you get the hang of it. For this guide I used the ever popular McLaren 720S, again taking the aggressive default setup but making a few small tweaks for the cooler track conditions. I upped the tyre pressures, lowered brake pads to 1 and changed the brake bias from the default 57.0 all the way back to 54.8. Give this a try and see what you think. I do like having the extra front end and rotation on corner entry but if you're struggling in this phase please start out with the default 57. Another reminder that we do hope to have a general setup guide for all three American DLC tracks at some point down the line. For now though, let's jump into this track guide. Hug the wall as you approach turn 1, aiming to brake just before the 400 meter board. Shift down to second, braking in a straight line before easing off the brakes and getting the front of the car turned in around about the 100 board. You should aim to get as close to the inside curb as possible at the apex, without actually hitting the curb, in the McLaren at least. Get back on the throttle straight away to pull the car over to the right on exit. This is so that you can open out your entry for turn 2 which follows straight after. You do need to lift a touch just to ensure that you get the car onto and over the left hand side apex curb. Then get back on the power nice and early using all of the road as you head towards the exit curb on the right. Just watch out for oversteer here. I did have to do a fair bit of sawing at the wheel at times just to keep up the momentum and keep the car stable. Hug this right hand curb as you enter turn 3 but gradually ease your way out to the left as you prepare for 4. Aim for the curb on the left, you're going to use this as your proper turn in point. Start braking just for half a second or so as you approach this curb and use this braking phase to get the car all the way over to the left. Doing this will widen your entry for turn 4, allowing you to carry more speed and get on the power sooner. Shift down to second and get the car rotated, aiming for the inside curb as your apex. You want to try and hit this curb relatively late so that when you do get on the power as you hit it, you aren't going to understeer wide on the exit. Get all of this right and you should carry some nice speed naturally out towards the exit curb. Feel free to short shift to third as well if need be to avoid unnecessary extra oversteer. Run along this curb for a second and then haul the car all the way to the right once again through turn 5. You don't need to brake or lift if you get the turn in right, but I do tend to short shift to fourth in order to keep the nose of the car in. You want to hit this inside curb if you can so that the car remains over to the right on exit. Try and get as far over as you realistically can because you're going to want to open out the long turn 6 as much as possible. You need to start turning in before braking here to shift the balance over in a stable way and this will allow you to get the car turned properly as you get slowed down. Sadly there is a real lack of reference points here. I was using the rubbered in track surface in hot lap mode but of course that's not a safe reference point during a race or qualifying session as rubber changes. It's just one of those corners where you will have to learn the braking point based on feel. The only solid reference point you can use for rough guidance is the service road on your right, but the braking starts way before that. Here, you want to trail brake into the corner, aiming for the curb on entry and shifting down to second. This is one of those long corners that requires a double apex, in-out-in in kind of technique. Let the car run slightly wide in the middle of the corner by lifting off the brakes and coasting to get the car rotated. Again, this is a bit of a McLaren specific technique, so you may need to adapt your style to your chosen car. This rotation allows you to cut back on full power and head for the left hand curb again as you reach the exit. It's then a quick dab on the brakes and throwing the car back to the right for the right hander onto the back straight. This one is tricky, you have to get the car rotated early but it's very easy to miss the inside curb, so it's a case of prioritising the entry to ensure that you don't miss that curb. In the McLaren, again this means a bit of coasting. The exit here is also strange, the corner feels very tight based on the trajectory and the angle of the curb, but the road widens immensely on exit as there is essentially a second full road that you are allowed to use. So what this means is that you can nail the throttle early, open out your steering and run all the way to the outside. It's a tricky corner to get right, but important to your lap time and may open up an overtaking opportunity into turn 8. Head back towards the right hand side and brake at the 200 meter board. Change down to second, rolling off the brakes as you turn in to get the car as close as possible to the inside curb without actually hitting it. This damn McLaren. Get back on the power nice and early to haul yourself back to the left, which opens up the entry to 9, 10 and 11. This section is all about rhythm. Bouncy rhythm. If you channel your inner fall guy, bouncing from one apex to the next you will gain a lot of time. First off, I short shift to third and lift off the throttle in order to get the nose of the car in for turn 9, using all of the curb. A change of direction and a downshift later, that's all I need for turn 10, again using as much curb as possible and this time focus on using the throttle to pull the car all the way over to the left. It's then a brief step on the brakes and a big change in direction as you fire the car over to the right for turn 11. 
there is so much time to be gained here by turning early and abusing track limits on the inside of the corner. So long as your left wheels, yes, left wheels, are still on the inside curb, you are within track limits, so you essentially want to fully cut this corner as much as you can. On this lap, I left a tenth on the table by not cutting it enough, but I'll now show you the previous lap, which was also fully legal by the way, to show just how much curb you can get away with. Get on the power as soon as possible, running all the way out to the exit curb. The following kink is flat out, but it's worth then running up the bank early so that you can break in a straight line for turn 13. It comes up quicker than you might expect, and for me is one of the toughest corners on the circuit. It's easy to overshoot or misjudge your speed, but also just as easy to break too early and lose time. It's a fine balance. Break just before the 300 board, shifting down to second. In the McLaren, roll off the brakes and turn in around about the 100 board. It's a 90 degree corner and requires a little bit of patience. The best way I found was to get as close as possible to the inside curb without actually hitting it, and just being careful not to get back on the power until you have the required rotation after the apex. Shoot back to the right for the final section of the lap. This one feels very Paul Riccardi in nature, you have to trail brake a little and get the car rolled in towards the apex nice and early. If you hold the brakes on for too long or with too much pressure, you will easily miss the apex curb. However, if you roll off the brakes too early, you might still hit the apex, but you will run wide on exit, so you have to balance things here. I tend to shift down to first, using the engine braking to get the required rotation, then short shift to second just before getting on the power for stability. Use the curb and pull yourself back to the left to widen your entry for the flat out turn 15. If you want to take this corner flat, you need to give yourself that angle on entry, and if you manage it, you can get the car turned back to the right, using a bit of the inside curb midway through the corner and then letting the car run out wide towards the wall and exit. That concludes our guide of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course, and it's now time to play you the lap at full speed and give my ailing voice a rest. So then, hopefully you've been able to pick up some pointers from this video. In terms of lap time targets, it's always hard to say at this early stage, but my time was a 134.7, bearing in mind that although this was the default setup, the cold track temperatures mitigate that difference. Pros will be looking at getting into the low 34s even on a warmer, slower track, whilst a solid time to aim for as a pro-am is a 138.5. Beginners should aim to try and get underneath the 1 minute 44 mark. I have to say, I really did enjoy learning this circuit more than I expected. It is technical and there are some tricky corners with limited reference points, but the flow of the circuit certainly surprised me. Just before I wrap things up, here is my 10 second summary. Bounce from apex to apex early on, widen your entry to 4, have a bit of patience through 5 and smoothen out your run through 6. Use all the road into and out of 7, late breaking for 8 and then bounce your way through 9, 10, 11. Precision required into 12 and get the rotation right through 13, don't hit the wall out of 14. If you found this and our other track guides useful, please make sure you show your appreciation by hitting the like button, and if you don't want to miss any future videos, be sure to subscribe to the Traction channel. That's it from me today, so until next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.